Hey, everybody, welcome to episode number 178 of the Deaf Free Dad podcast. So I recently asked this question on our Facebook page. What is concerning you most about your finances right now? Now, we got a lot of different responses, everything from cost of living going up, emergency funds, having to start over, having patience during the process of getting out of debt, and even talking about supporting your adult kids and their needs. And we're going to be going through some of these challenges on today's show and just share a little bit of our perspective. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Debt-Free Dad Podcast with Brad Nelson. Brad and his co-hosts experience the anxiety of living paycheck to paycheck before learning the fundamentals of financial security. They are now on a mission to empower regular people to pay off their debt for good and enjoy happier, less stressful lives. Keep listening for inspirational interviews, tips, tricks, and practical advice to gain financial freedom. Hey, 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 how's everyone doing today? You can find us on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, Deaf Free Dad. And as always, guys, welcome to today's show. Glad you guys are joining us. And remember to get all the resources, show notes, and links for today's show. Uh, you can head over to balancesense.com forward slash 178. That is B-A-L-B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D-C-E-N-T-S.com forward slash uh, 178. Now, we do have to talk about this. Ryan, I didn't even tell you we were going to talk about this, but uh, we've been working on a little project. You've been working on this uh, digital debt freedom planner. And by the time that this episode airs, maybe, fingers crossed, it might be on our website. So you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we um, the we've taken the physical planner and we have uh, did a lot of work, and we now will be releasing that on uh, Good Notes for Apple iOS, and uh, it has been also tested on the Penly app, which works on Android. Um, it will most likely work on a lot of other apps, but those are the ones that's been tested on. So as we release it, um, those are the ones that we are we are known to be tested, and as it is uh, released longer and we know it's tested on other ones. We'll make sure to, to let people know what else it works on. Yeah. It looks really, really good. Especially, it's pretty fancy. Especially if you, now you guys, now have you guys been testing it? Amber, you've been testing it. Have you been testing it? I've been playing it? with it. Yeah. Okay. What, what yeah. would you, what is your feedback so far? Does it suck or do you like it? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> it sucks really. No. <laughs> Step away. I think that what I love the stickers, like I love being able to pull on all the stickers out. Um, those are really fun. And, uh, for the Android, cause I have Android and I don't need any, any special pen. I think Ryan, you mentioned you might need a special pen or whatever. And I didn't need a special pen whatsoever. Really? So that was really cool. Yeah. So are you just, just using your finger? Stylus. Oh, you just use any stylus. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which was kind of nice. Well, that's kind of fancy. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Now, Katie, are you testing it too or no? I am, but I haven't started that yet. It's okay. been a little busy. Excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. <laughs> but we have, we have had other people testing it and the feedback we've gotten so far, um, cause we are kind of in beta test right now. We do want to make sure we find if there's any bugs or any issues. And so far the, the feedback we've gotten has been extremely positive. Um, a couple of things that have been found, which is great. That's why we want to do this. Um, but overall, the feedback we are getting is uh, people are loving it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested, uh, it could be available right now. We haven't had like a firm date because we're still playing around with it. But uh, if you go to our website, go to balancesense.com, click on the uh, Deaf Freedom Planner at the top of the page. We'll have some links up there pretty soon if they're not already up there. And uh, you guys can take a look. And what are we, what, what are we going to do? Like, what are we saying? Like 19 bucks? You get the whole thing for you get all of it? Yep. Nineteen dollars. Nineteen bucks, and you get a planner for life. It's gonna be awesome. Did y'all so. notice he almost said for nineteen dollars you get the thing for free? Sixty yeah. percent <laughs> of the time it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hey guys, I want to ask you the question because we asked everybody else. What is concerning you most about your financial life right now? Let's go around real quick. Oh, you're asking us. Yeah. I thought you were asking the audience. <laughs> no, I'm asking you. What like is there anything that's concerning about your financial life right now? For for me it's um it's just really long-term planning, retirement. Um it's still, you know, still a long ways away in some way in some respects, but um when once you understand the power of compound interest and how things accumulate, uh it it's not as much time as you think it is. Um 
you know, so that I think that's really the thing we've been talking a lot about, um, in our, my career transition and my job transition, just kind of making sure that, um, that we're lining things up and that things are still, we're still going to be on track to be able to retire and retire in a way that we want to. Yeah. Who's next? Is our people nervous? <laughs> <laughs> Now, Katie, you were just looking for like six bucks the other day. So maybe that's the most concerning thing for you. Remember? Yeah, I, mean, I, was, I had added up my debt paid off and it was $115,994. And I'm like, I need six more dollars to pay off somewhere. <laughs> Did you find it? I'm, yes, I'm already well past that. So yeah, we're good. But yeah, just getting this debt out of here. So that's the main thing. So I also am looking at saving, maximizing my retirement funding because I feel like I kind of started that later in life than I probably should have and got to play a little catch up. Yeah. Well, you're going to be well on your way once you're out of debt. I mean, you're going to have yes. a I good chunk of change. Few, I am a few weeks away from my five-year anniversary in Roots and yeah, I have less than $28,000 left to pay off. So. Yeah. Oh my That's God. That's incredible. Exciting. You're getting there. You're getting there. That's awesome. So excited. Amber, Chris, anything you wish to share? At top of my head, I, I, we're rebuilding our emergency fund, and that's what's stressing me out. I'm like, I just got to yeah. rebuild the damn thing. Doesn't that suck? I hate that. I hate that part. It's always nice to have, but then when you use it, it just sucks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's yeah. not fun. <laughs> Chris, anything? Well, I mean, I, I think that the, the biggest thing that's, affected me lately and this is gonna i hope this doesn't come across terrible there's no real <laughs> we, good we way to hear this. it <laughs> let me preface this by saying i've been doing this a long time okay been been doing this whole budgeting paying debt off investing building wealth since 2005 okay and i mentioned this in the last podcast episode that i'm sort of playing monopoly right yeah so you find a piece of land that you want and your mutual fund shares have grown to a certain level where you're like, okay, I can pull the money out and buy this property. Everybody follow me, right? Yep. And then the market goes down for two days. And you're like, I got to sell more shares to get the same dollar amount out. I know that sounds petty, but that is really the most recent thing is just being frustrated that I had to sell some mutual fund shares after it being down. I did it earlier today after being down for two days in a row, I'm like, why couldn't it have gone up for two days? And <laughs> then I got sold it. You know, it's like you try to yeah. wait for the perfect moment and it never happens. Yeah, but that's, I'm glad you shared that though, because that's how you keep your money. You know, even right. when you have a lot of it is making smart choices with it, you know, not being frivolous and being smart. Um, I love that you're stressing about that still. Isn't that a good thing? I mean, that's what's keeping you where you're at. It keeps you grounded and it, and it keeps you focused on what the goal is. It certainly does. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it goes back to what I said last week, letting your assets buy things for you, let them grow up, pull some money out of it. And in my case, I'm using it to buy more assets. Right. And, 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 and it's petty. I know, but it's not petty. It's just a different problem. It's just, you're in a different, it, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And, I guess there's the fear for me of coming across as arrogant or coming across as better than everybody. And I hope that doesn't come across that way to the audience. It certainly isn't meant to be that way. No, I don't, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Okay. I thought, I think it's good. And that's why, again, if you're listening to the show, you know, Katie, you're still working on getting out of debt. You know, Chris, you're much more further along than probably all of the other us, all of the rest of us right all now. All of the other us. All of the other us. <laughs> <laughs> all of the rest of us. And I think that's what's great about the show is to show people the the progress that you make along the way. I mean, like you said, since 2005. I mean, that's 18, what, 17, 18 years you've been doing this. I mean, and I was just like everybody who does Roots, everybody who's probably listening to the show, and right. all of you. So I, I really try to stay grounded yeah. and remember where I was and where I came from. And, but uh, maybe, maybe some of you can get some hope out of what I just said that, you know, keep doing this for a while and stuff work. We talked about this last week about what it's mean to be wealthy. Yep. You know, you keep doing this stuff, Brad, that you teach and Katie, you're going to figure this out. Your net worth is going up, even though you don't calculate it because you're dead and your liability is going down. Right. And so if you do the things that, that Brad teaches here, you're just kind of accidentally going to build wealth. It just happens. Isn't that a great accident? 
<laughs> it is. And then the question is, is okay, uh, now what do I do? And you get a whole new set of questions, then a whole new set of answers, then a whole new set of questions, and it never ends. It becomes more fun in a way, though. <laughs> that's for I'll sure. Thank you for investing tips. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, that's the thing. I, I just made a TikTok video about this the other day, and someone had said, you know, I'm interested, I'm ready to get started. And I think the, the the one thing that I think people need to understand about getting out of debt and having financial health is that it's not something you only can do for just a little while. You, ha you have to be committed to it all the time. You know, that you're going to handle your finances differently. You're going to do things differently. And that's why I'm glad you brought it up, Chris, because you're 18 years into this, 17, 18 years into it, and you're you're still committed to it and you're still practicing the same things that have gotten you where to where you are and that's how you keep winning and so i think there's some people have this idea that well i only have to do this for a little while and i can just go back to doing what i was doing before and it's like no you can't <laughs> right you, you, that's just not how it's going to work you know you you have to commit to changing your entire financial mindset and the way you manage your money if you want to get out of debt and stay out of debt and uh that's why i love it so i mean as uh for me i would say the most concerning thing is just you know my situation going down to a single income family I mean, that's going to take some adjustments. Uh, I will say that, you know, when a spouse passes away and because I have a minor child, uh, we do get, uh, I don't, Avery gets uh, survivor benefits. So it's not like I lose out completely on income and helping raise her. Uh, but it is something that is significantly different than say what my wife was making uh, when she was working. So, I mean, there is going to be some significant changes in our budget and, uh, and I've been talking about that over these last several episodes. And as I will continue to, you know, our budget, my budget is all over the place when it comes to eating out and gas and groceries and uh, all of those things. And I'll be honest. I mean, there is some emotional spending going on in there too. Not a lot, not nearly as much as there used to be, but, uh, but there is still some, and it's going to take a while for that to, um, settle down a little bit. But, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we took out life insurance. So I think one of the biggest things for me over this next year, and I'm not doing it right now because I'm just not in a mindset or, a uh, place to make any sort of big financial decisions right now is to figure out how to best use that money to be in a position like Chris is being, you know, how do I use that life insurance money not to buy more stuff and, and to go out and live this luxurious life. And all of a sudden that money's gone. It's to, how can we use this money to create generational wealth, not only for myself, but also for our kids. And how can we start moving that direction and using that life insurance as a blessing to our family as we move forward in the future? Um, so that's going to be something, and I will definitely be talking a lot about that more as the podcast progresses here throughout not only this year, but also next year, uh, and, and how that all fits into all this, because I think there's a lot of people who don't ever get to experience that, and I think it would be really good information about, you know, what we're doing, what things we're deciding to do. And I keep saying we. That's not weird. I'm going to have to get out of that. It's me. <laughs> what, what I'm doing, right? Um, uh, because it is. It's, it's man, it's... it's um, it's a journey most people will never be on, at least until they're in their older years. And when you're in your older years, you know, a lot of people don't have that much or nearly as much life as I have left to live. So I've got to definitely be smart about the money that was left and, and what we're going to do with it. So we'll talk more about that coming up on future podcast episodes. But let's get to some of your guys' concerns because that's what I know you guys are most concerned about. Um, so in the group, uh, Taryn, we got the first one, and I wanted to bring this one up because, Taryn, it's, it's simple, but their concern right now is just the cost of living keeps going up. Uh, so man, I, this one's tough because I don't have any magic answers for this. Mm -mm. I, there isn't, there's not. And I think I, I forget Warren Buffett, right? I don't know. Maybe you can find this, but I thought Warren Buffett or one of his guys at Warren, he had like some quote back when inflation was rising about, you know, people who don't live extravagant lives aren't going to be drastically affected by the cost of living going up because they've been living below their means. They're not attached to a bunch of things and payments and, you know, this life that they're trying to keep up with. And, and if you've been really disciplined in your financial plan, the cost of living, yes, will go up, but it's not going to affect you nearly as much as say someone who's just been spending, 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 spending. And all of a sudden they're like, I can't afford to do this anymore. And it's a shock for them. I got really mad at the grocery store because a bag of salad was $5 and I'm like, nope, I'm just not going to eat salad this week because that's ridiculous. And then I ended up going to the farmer's market over the weekend and got an entire head of lettuce for $2. And I was ecstatic about saving $3 and it's fresh and it's good. And I know it, where it was grown, yep. but also yep. I had an, 
that the reason that I moved recently was because my rent was going to go up over $200 a month. They wanted to jack it up to be competitive with the current market for housing. Um, and I was renting a nice apartment and I'm like, well, I'm not going to pay you more. You painted my, no, they didn't even paint my front door. They changed the front light fixture and it looks a little fancier now, but I'm like, and what else are you going to do? They were going to paint the door, but they were going to wait till after I moved out. Um, and so I'm, I found another apartment and I'm actually paying $60 a month less at the new place. And I just got the electric bill that I was worried about. And it's actually lower than my other one was. So I'm like, all right, I think I'm winning on this decision. And I'm not moving again and for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. I think, well, I think you bring up a good point is that I think we all, and there's so many people out there who just, and, and again, I'm not saying that the cost of living is not going up because it is. And I know it's putting pressure Absolutely. on people, you know, but mm -hmm. I think there's also a lot of people who, who just complain that they can't keep buying the stuff that they used to buy because their income doesn't support it. And it's like, well, most of that stuff that you are complaining about is stuff that you honestly probably don't really need all that much right mm -hmm. and so but that's not everybody's case i mean there's there's people who are genuinely struggling right now um that are just trying to make it by week after week month after month because of the cost of living so i mean some of the things obviously for me and we talk about this all the time on the podcast is make sure you're constantly looking at your expenses Go back, mm -hmm. review the last, I feel like this is like a broken record on the show, but we say it all the time. It's amazing how many, how many people just don't do it. Just go back and look at the last three to six months of your spending. And I guarantee you there is going to be money there that you're spending that you're, that you're not even recognizing or that you're noticing. And, uh, it's an eye opener for so many people. So I would highly recommend that you go do that. Make sure you shop your services, make sure you're paying the best or you're getting the best price for everything. Make sure you're making that a priority. And then last but not least, and I know people don't like to hear this because a lot of us are just already maybe you're already working a side hustle or maybe you just don't have time in general. It's just finding ways to, to make income. Um, we have a roots member who just celebrated this past week selling $300 worth of stuff on Facebook marketplace. And then I, I said, great job. And they came back. They're like, Oh, I I'm actually over $3,000 I've sold on Facebook wow, marketplace. Nice. Um, so it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like always these, you know, these big income producing things. It's just something that brings in a little bit of money to obviously ease a little bit of the stress that you're dealing with. I know I've been unpacking and I'm like, why did I even bother moving this? And I have a whole sell pile. And if it doesn't sell, it's just going to get donated or trashed. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the me five years ago getting into roots would have been freaking out right now if the cost of groceries was going up and up and up every time I went to the store and I paid, I already paid close attention to what I was spending, but I was maxing out my credit cards to do the necessities of buying and it was very stressful. So I totally get if I wasn't in the position I'm in right now, being on this journey, I would be completely freaking out. Yeah. And I, well, I think I'm glad you brought that up because I think it brings the value of two. And we, we talked about this a couple episodes ago is waiting for a crisis to happen to take action. And by then it's too late. You know, and, and now here we are where, you know, inflation is high, cost of living is going up, you know, incomes aren't necessarily keeping pace. And and if you're just getting started right now, it's it's going to be a little hard. There's no question about it. But look at someone like Katie. You're, you're going to be ready for the next one if you get started right now. Don't use this right now as an excuse of it's not the right time. This is the perfect time to get started, even when times are a little bit tough. Um, but those are a few things that I, I would at least look at that will hopefully help. Uh, just a little bit. And again, I think it all comes down to, and I know this isn't everybody for a lot of people out there. It's, it's just reducing your lifestyle, especially during these times. And that'll help tremendously. Uh, LaKenya Henderson says it's summer and she's struggling with the fact that I want to do all the things. Me too. <laughs> so let's talk about this. You too. All right. So, so I how love summer and doing the summer things and our summers are so short that you just, you just want to get it all in. And if you don't plan for it properly, you can't. It's yeah. just not feasible. I just made but a fun. We, we do a lot of free stuff, so. Right. Yo, so Okay, so let's talk about that. What kind of free stuff do you do? Oh, we'll do a beach day. It's, you know, doesn't cost any money. Um, we do a lot of camping. And because of how we're set up, that's just an ongoing, you know, we just go all year. So we just do free stuff. We hit, There's concerts in the park that are going to be starting up this summer that are free to go to every Wednesday night. We'll just go. Yeah. 
So yeah, we, there's got to be free events everywhere. Yeah, we just pick like the one, like we camp, and that's what we're doing for right now. Uh, we we just have a sinking fund for it. We put the money away every single month, and and that's kind of our big summer activity. I mean, that's just that's just what we do. I mean, we do do a few other things throughout the summer, but uh, but for the most part, camping is is kind of the thing that we have chosen to do. I think it gives the kids a lot of activities. It gets them outside off their devices. They get to meet and socialize with other kids. Um, and, uh, in fact, my son is 13 and man, he's all about the girls right now. And camping is <laughs> where it's at. If <laughs> he's having a really good time with that. <laughs> he's got that really cool haircut right now. That's right. He's got that perm going on. Right. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think, look, look, I think it all comes down to, uh, just proper budgeting and, and determining what it is again that you want to do. <laughs> and putting a budget together that allows you to save that money consistently every single month. So that way when summer comes, you can do all the things that you want to do. Now you're probably not going to be able to do all of the things, including <laughs> what your friends and everybody else is doing, but you can do the things that you want to do by, by having a good budget. And, and I, you know, for the, this one's, this one's hard. Cause I think we're, we're struggling with this in a way right now is, um, you know, like I said, I've recently lost my job and we're having to readjust our budget. And we've been used to doing all of the things. And so all of a sudden, um, like we just, we just got home today from driving 12 hours up North to see family. Um, that would have been a flight <laughs> and trust me, there was a lot of, I wish we could have flown conversations <laughs> on this drive. Um, but you have to, you know, and I think, I think that, that even when you're, uh, even when you get to the other side, um, you could do a lot more stuff, but you still can't do everything. Right. And I think, you know, um, even me, even all of us, you know, I've, we, we are out of debt, but yet we drove, um, we probably could have flown, but it's like, you really start looking at that. What, what's the cost? Like, what, what do we weigh that? Is it really worth it? Is it worth it, you know, to be in the car with our three adult children, you know, for this drive or do we just, you know, and, and so I, I, I just, I, I totally understand that because we're, we're feeling that right now because we're, we're having to readjust our budget and just kind of, um, you know, tighten things up again. Next one Heather says is I need to completely start over. That is her biggest financial concern right now. And um, who wants to take this one? Well, I, I'm curious. Completely start over. Completely start, start over. Again? Let's let's look at. I don't know. That's the that's all the information I have is I need to completely start over. So let's say this person's probably completely fallen off the wagon, starting over from square one, the starting line of having to get restarted again. So I mean. How, do we answer that question or do we give them some words of encouragement? That's about the only thing that I can do is to say, you know, we failed at it several times before we got the traction that it took to keep it going to eventually get over the hump and pay off all of our debt and then go from there. So, you know, it's, it's a journey and you're going to stumble along the way and it's not going to be easy. It's not going to happen overnight but stick with it. That's all I can say. Do you have a count, Chris, of how many times you had a, like, let's say not completely start over, but start over. I would say, I mean, completely, yeah, probably at least three times. It was the fourth time before I got the traction. And there were many, sometimes many years in between those start overs. Yeah. And the only thing I kicked myself now was, not getting back up and trying immediately, failing a second time, getting up and trying immediately, failing a third time, so I could get up immediately and go the fourth time and speed this process up a little bit by a couple of years. But it was probably at least three times that we failed and had to start over again before we got it right. I would say just get it, like get up and get on it again and just start one little step just to get on the right path again, because it's again, that momentum, just like when you're doing the snowball of debt payoff that it's like, okay, every little win says, okay, I can do this. Now let's go to the next step and just let today be day one. Just do it. Yeah, I would agree. I think, I think finding, um, I think a lot of people make the mistake of trying to go at it like just with full intensity. And that's great if you can keep up with that. But for a lot of people, life's going to happen and it's going to, you know, mess you up. So I think a lot of people deal with a lot of this, these fits and starts 
you know, they'll, they'll, they'll start, they'll be energized. And then all of a sudden something happens, then they, then they stop and then they have to get re-motivated and they start, I put all this energy into it and then they stop again. And those constant fits and starts get so exhausting. And before you know it, you just quit. So instead of, you know, trying to go at it full force, I would suggest anyone out there is just like you said, Katie, it's little steps. Just what can you do a little bit every single day in roots? We call it the roots 15. I mean, that's what we tell people all the time. It's just 15 minutes a day. That's all you got to commit to it. Just 15 minutes a day. And if you can just do that every day consistently, you will make amazing progress. And we see it all the time. So it doesn't have to be this a, a huge amount of time. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, this this huge amount of action all the time. That Those things are great if you can maintain that level, but most people can't. So just make sure you pick out a level that you can continuously keep working at every single day. And that'll help a lot, I think. And I'll point out that this happens in other areas of your life, not just financially. I have lost a bunch of weight now, four different occasions. And the question for me now is, can I figure out how to keep it off this time? And hopefully the first three times of losing weight and gaining it back, I've learned from it and can make the changes that are necessary. So you see it in every area of your life. You just got to get back up. You know, Ryan, you're having to do this sort of with your, your job and your career at this point. You know, get back on your feet. As long as the sun comes up tomorrow, you have a chance to make today better than you did yesterday. And so I'm, I'm sort of right there with us. I need to completely start over. That was me a few months ago when it was you know, about weight loss, trying to get my weight down. And I think you, you bring up a good point though. And that, that is, I think, um, you know, if you, if you have failed or if you failed multiple times, I, I failed multiple times, we had to take a step back and kind of like what you said, Brad, is one of the things that was kind of sabotaging us was this mindset that was out there at the time of like full intensity, rice and beans. You're not going to lay, you're not going to have a life until you're out of debt. And that was our mentality and it. And we just, we would do it and it would be awesome for a few months. We'd make enormous progress and then it would just be like, boop, we just couldn't do it. So it, like for us, we had to take a step back and kind of learn from like, okay, we fa- we keep failing. What are we doing wrong? Why are we, you know, what's, what's not working? You know, is there something that I'm not seeing? So I would encourage, like, if, if you, if you're starting over again, and this has happened multiple times, maybe just before you just jump back on and try riding the bike again, maybe just take a step back and say, okay, what I've tried this three times. Have you tried it the same way all three times and you just keep failing? Cause maybe there's something there that's, if you just change something, it's like, Oh, now it starts clicking. Yeah. I paid off $22,000 in debt before I started roots. And then somehow I got well over my head in debt again. And I was like, okay, what I'm doing is not working. Let's try this instead. And this has stuck, but it's not perfect. The shortest distance from A to B is a short straight line, but it's the flight of the bumblebee. <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> it's not a straight path. Oh, I love that. That's good. <laughs> Next one is Angela. Angela says, where to use my emergency fund first? She says, so many things keep popping up and I do not want to go into debt. I need to plan this out strategically. And she also notes that she knows that she's going to be needing a new roof and that is going to be uh, the most important thing. And uh, Angela, first, I would just say, you know, just in this comment, I think it already sounds like you have some ideas of things that are going to be coming up. So when it comes to emergencies, it's like, you know, if especially if you own a home, you own vehicles or, you know, you got kids. I mean, those are going to be the things that you want to think about. I mean, you just compare historically what emergencies have popped up and you know what do you need to save for what things are coming down the pipeline and that way you have a good understanding of what's coming up um the other thing i would recommend too as far as for emergency funds and i don't know if you guys have done this but is creating a list of approved emergencies uh we've actually had a few roots members just celebrate this recently and i that's what we did and it was something that just held us accountable like if it doesn't if it's not on this list it's not an emergency and we can't go in there um this is especially important if you've got a bigger emergency fund uh, because it can get tempting at times, especially if you really want to take a vacation or you want to go do something fun. But you having a concert that just popped up that yeah. I didn't plan for yeah, isn't exactly. an emergency. <laughs> no, not so much. Right? Yeah, it, it's important <laughs> to have to know have those boundaries, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I think having that list is uh, is especially as your first getting started is is really good. I know I've rebuilt my emergency fund so many times. I, I stopped counting a long, long time ago. But it definitely just having it helps but yes once you've built it up and you see that number drop and you're like ah like 
no, now I just need to build it up again. You get motivated to yep. just get back on and do it again. Um, but remember medical bills, work out some kind of payment plan. Do not put them on a credit card. They should not be charging you any kind of interest and they can't send you off if you have a payment plan in place, but get it in writing. Yeah. Well, and I think along with this, Angela is going to be, is going to be proper budgeting and, and really looking at, um, you know, what's coming up over the next quarter, what's coming up over the next six months, what's coming up over the next year. And, and I think if, if you can get yourself on a proper budget and create sinking funds, especially for things that are, you know, are going to be coming up, it's going to do away. Like for instance, your roof is, is, is really not an emergency because you know about it. So it, it's really just when does it need to be done? And then how do we come up with a plan to be able to pay for that? So um, an emergency is an unexpected expense. We, I mean, we know, you know, some things that are going to break and you obviously know your roof is. So it's about all about creating a plan early enough to help you be able to save up and pay cash for those, or at least pay as much cash as you possibly can to limit the amount of debt that you have to take on to maybe do that repair. Uh, Margo up next says uh, she's in roots. She says, my brain says you are doing a great job, which they are doing a fantastic job. However, my emotions are looking more or for more ways to cut down my debt even faster. I'm becoming impatient with myself, which is not good because when this happens, I lose motivation. I want to slow my mind down to make good choices and not be distracted by the time debt repayment is taking. I need to breathe and I need to be patient. Um, I could feel that so much. <laughs> oh, this is probably the hardest part. Yeah. 9,000%. Yes. Yeah. Chris, what do you have to say about that one? Well, you and Ryan mentioned earlier that going gangbusters and gang ho was the way that you sort of fell off the wagon. But for me, it was the opposite. It's been the same thing with losing weight. It's the same thing with trying to get this ice cream shop up and running. I find I do better when I'm 100% driven. Here's the goal. Here's how you win the game. Let's go. And for me, so it's the, it's the total opposite, but I do understand both of your viewpoints for the vast majority of people. When you go into it with that mindset, you're probably going to fail. Okay. So I'm, I'm a little torn on this one because she says, my, my brain says I'm doing a good job. Then you tell me she's doing a good job, right? She is. But there's a lot of success in that. And there's a lot to be happy about that. And you're obviously making great strides in reaching the goal of paying down the debt. For me, it became, how can I find another $5? How, you know, or $6, I guess, as Katie was trying to figure out, right? You know, yes. how can you find another $25, another 50? Because I knew if I could find another 50 bucks, that was 50 more dollars I was going to pay on my debt. So for me, I embraced it. And I'm not saying that this is what Margot should do, Okay. I'm just telling you my story and my perspective. For me, I embraced embraced it as a game. You know, I played sports all my life. And most games, it's it's trying to get the high score, right? Well, I looked at the $97,000 worth of debt that we had that we needed to pay off as not necessarily $97,000, but I needed to find 97 ways to come up with $1,000, right? Or, you know, a couple hundred ways to come up with 500 bucks, and I treated that as, as points in a game. Every time I could find 500 points, $500, that was a point. Um, and Brad, you've heard me say this, maybe sometimes figure out what is it I want to do when I'm out of debt and, and get, a, get a jigsaw puzzle made of that. And every time you pay off a certain dollar amount of money, put the jigsaw together so that you could visually see your success. And so one strategy for Margo might be don't lose motivation embrace who you are, embrace the fact that you're being successful and don't get distracted by how long, but ask yourself how quickly. Now, if you find yourself falling off the wagon, then go back to everything that, that Brad and Ryan said earlier and forget everything I just said. <laughs> okay. If that sort of makes sense is you've got to do it your way. It's your journey. You've got to figure out what's good for you. If you feel like though you're losing motivation and that it's a distraction, then maybe the right strategy is to slow down. So I just completely talked in a circle there. No, I think, well, when I did it, we slowed, we were going really gung ho. Like we were like all full force. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, we can't 
go and do this trip that we want to go do, or we can't go to this concert we want to go to. So we totally slowed down so we could still do some of the things we liked while we were still paying off debt. And we just took it a little extra time. Yep. The and goal doesn't you were change. successful, but you did it your way because mm-hmm. there's, the point is there's no one right way to do it. Yeah. Right. There's certainly the lots of wrong stays- ways to do it, but just keep the journey. The goal stays the same, but the finish line might keep moving a little further down as far as the timeline goes. Cause I was the same way. I started off like intensity focused and then I was like, I need to give myself some grace. I need to be able to allow myself to pay for a trip in cash when I'm like, but I want to pay off debt, but I also really need a vacation. So I had to allow myself like, okay, you can, you've earned it. You can go on a vacation, budget for it, pay for it in cash before you go. And then you don't have to worry about a credit card bill at the end of it. And that is a win. And I've done that several times and my end date keeps moving a little bit further into the future, but I know it will still happen because I'm doing the steps. I'm just not running. I'm, a light jog now. Yeah. Yeah. So out of curiosity, Amber and Brad or Ryan, when you got close to paying off all of your debt, did you get re-energized at that point and speed back up? For for me, for sure. hundred um, percent. I think, you know, like Katie, we had a very long process. You know, it took us a lot of years to get out of debt. Um, and I think that's why, you know, it, like if you've got a short game, you know, you're like, Hey, I can do this in 12 months. We probably could have really been intense for 12 months, but ours was, you know, five, six, seven years to get it cleaned up. Um, but yes, hundred percent as we got last, as we got down to like that last 10, 15, $20,000, um, it, the finish lines, it's, it's easy to, it's easier to see it. You know, when you're staring at $160,000 in debt, it's very difficult to see the finish line and it's very difficult to say for the next five, six years, I'm not going to go out to eat. I'm not going to take a vacation. I'm not going to let my kids play sports. I'm not, it's just like that would have been their entire childhood, you know, to like rob them of all that so we could do it. And I just, I, we just didn't want to do that. Yeah. I would say as we got towards the end, um, or at least when I got towards the end, I, yeah, definitely got more motivated. And I, I will say, Chris, I mean, to be clear, I, I did it the same way you did it as far as being all in. I think I just learned along the way that we think it's going to go perfect, right? <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> and I think sometimes we just need to understand we got to give ourselves grace. Very much like you said, Katie. You, you're going through this and you're going, going, and going. All of a sudden it's like, whoa, you know. And I don't think we understand that. Like same thing with my business. When we, when we started doing this, I started very slowly. I started doing it while I was working full time. Then I went part time at my job and I was doing this part time. And then finally I was like, I'm going all in because I need to give it my full attention if I really want this to work. And very much like you, Chris, I, I, I went 100% very much like you are in your ice cream shop. Like it was just like, I'm just going to do it. And uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And, but I also went into it with the experience of getting out of debt, knowing that this isn't going to go perfect and I have to be patient with it. And I got to understand that we're going to make some mistakes and it's not going to go nearly as fast as I want it to. And that's okay, you know, but you could still give it your all and still also give yourself grace that it's not going to happen in the timeline that you have perfectly worked out because it won't. In fact, when it comes to this business, man, it's been grueling, right? I wish we were so much further ahead than we were, but it's taken a lot longer. I, I have so much respect for people who open up businesses because this is a lot of work. A lot of people don't understand how much work you put into it. Um, but, uh, I think I've taken that whole process though and put it into something like this and, um, going at it all in and just giving yourself grace, I think is a good thing. I was going to be all paid off by the five year mark. And I'm like, right now I'm like, okay, I have about two years left and I'll be done with it. And I'm, I'm totally okay with that. And it's all good. And I'm very happy. That's awesome. So the totally awesome debt freedom planner is helping so many people make consistent progress with their finances. Whether that be building emergency funds, paying down bills, budgeting, tracking paydays, saving up for larger purchases, goal planning, and planning for those irregular yearly expenses that always seem to catch you by surprise. Now, the Debt Freedom Planner will help you take the stress out of managing your money 
And if the thought is running through your mind, hey, I just need to have a simple tool to get my finances together, this planner is perfect for you. Head over to therealdebtfreedad.com, click on the Debt Freedom Planner in the menu at the top of the page, and order your Debt Freedom Planner today. And that's how it means it's time for the celebrations of the show. First, we have Erin Hood, an extra $100 to savings. And she says, I, t- I looked up my 401k contribution for the year. In five months, I've put $3,000 in at my new job. For someone who's been living in survival mode her entire adult life, that's exciting. Yeah. What an awesome win. Good for you, Erin. That's got to be a great feeling. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Kelly Kwiatkowski, my budget is done. It's a little messy. But it's done, and that's totally okay, Kelly. All I have to say is thank God for pencils <laughs> and erasers. And heck yeah, Kelly's just getting started, and she's already making some really great progress. But uh, you're absolutely right. Pencils and erasers are going to be your best friend, so great job. And Cindy Gibb, she had not one, not two, not three, but four <laughs> big wins this week <laughs> for our Sesame Street fans out there. She purchased a car with cash. That's I mean, that's a big win, right? That's huge. <laughs> Not only that, she put a thousand dollars in an emergency fund. Dang. Paid off three credit cards. There you go. And I'm assuming paid off three cell phones. Wow. Right? wow. Cindy, wow. those are some fat. What a week. What a week. Great job. That's a big week. That's like a year for some people. Yeah, it is. That's huge. Danielle Troy, July's budget is done, and there's a mini beach day trip planned and paid for in there. Yeah, love, I love, love that. Love the beach days. Yeah, great job, Danielle. Uh, and Hillary Morse, I sold three hundred dollars worth of stuff I don't use. <laughs> yeah, there you nice. go. Income producing activities. I love it. Uh, congratulations to all you guys and congratulations to all of you out there listening to the show that are working hard at getting your families out of debt. And if you're just getting started with our podcast, or maybe you've been listening for some time and you're interested in how you can get started on the road to financial freedom, go visit our website at balancedance.com, sign up for our free life without payments workshop, where I'm actually going to show you the first steps that have helped people just like you and I kick financial stress and worry for good. Thanks for listening to the Debt Free Dad podcast. Connect with us on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram at Brad Nelson Debt Free Dad. If you found value in today's episode, please leave a rating and review. We so appreciate it. For resources, show notes, and links mentioned in today's show, visit balancedsense.com. That's balancedsense.com. Catch you next week.